This is Eddie Muller welcoming you once again to Noir Alley. As an artistic movement, film noir certainly seemed to have a message. The world was a much darker place than we wanted to admit, and left to their temptations, people will usually succumb to their worst instincts. This worldview was so entwined in these sinister and sexy entertainments, it rarely felt like a message. Most noir films taken individually weren't interested in educating anybody, but their cumulative effect created an alternative to the traditional Hollywood universe, one without any guarantee of happily ever after. Today's film, Crossfire, made at RKO in 1947, certainly looks and feels like film noir. There's a shocking murder, desperate suspects, betrayals and double crosses, and a mysterious woman in the middle of it all. Plus, most of the drama plays out over the course of a single night, one rendered in stark noir style. And despite all that, many people still consider Crossfire more of a message picture than a genuine film noir. The movie's based on a novel, The Brick Foxhole, written by Richard Brooks, who'd go on to have a long and distinguished filmmaking career that would last into the 1980s. Brooks played a significant, if often overlooked, role in film noir providing, without credit, the screenplay for The Killers, the 1946 hit that helped ignite the movement, as well as scripts for Brute Force, Key Largo, and Mystery Street. The one-time newspaper man wrote The Brick Foxhole while serving as a sergeant in the Marine Corps. But his story was the antithesis of the kind of morale-boosting military dramas Hollywood churned out during World War II. With the war over and the good guys victorious, RKO production chief Dory Sherry gambled that the public was ready for a film that dared suggest that the hatred and fascism America had helped to conquer might just fester on the home front, even within soldiers who'd served on the right side of the fight. In 1947, it took incredible guts to make this movie. The man showing the most courage was producer Adrian Scott. He was riding high at RKO, having produced a string of successes, Murder My Sweet, Cornered, and Deadline at Dawn. It was Scott who bought the rights to the brick foxhole, and it was his decision to hang the narrative on just one of the book's several storylines, the murder of an innocent civilian by a demobilized soldier. In Brooks's novel, the victim is a homosexual. Knowing that would never get past the production code, which wanted Americans to believe homosexuals didn't exist, Scott changed the character to a Jew, played in the film by Sam Levine. One of these days, maybe we'll all learn to shift gears. Maybe we'll stop hating and start liking things again. Huh? Now, this wasn't the only film that year dealing with anti-Semitism. Over at 20th Century Fox, Daryl Zanuck was making Gentleman's Agreement, a much more expensive A-list production that wore its social conscience like a badge of honor. Crossfire would take a different track. Made under the radar, in the manner of a B-budget genre thriller, but intended to have the incendiary impact of a grenade lobbed into American movie theaters. This was the first film made at RKO under the auspices of executive producer Dory Sherry, who would soon become the studio's production chief. And despite his proclivity for topical message pictures, Sherry was leery of tackling this hot button issue, especially since the villain wears the uniform of the United States Army. But Adrian Scott proved persuasive, and his team had a proven track record. Production was completed in only 20 days, and Crossfire ended up beating Gentlemen's Agreement into theaters by several months. It earned stellar reviews, was RKO's top grossing film of 1947, and it garnered no small amount of controversy, including some complaints that the filmmakers undercut their own message by making the anti-Semitic killer so revolting he was unbelievable, if only. In 1945, before he'd sold the movie rights to Adrian Scott, Brooks had met a fellow Marine who told him that if the book ever got turned into a film, he was the guy to play the character of Montgomery. I know that son of a bitch, the soldier said. Nobody knows him better than I do. And two years later, 
that Marine, actor Robert Ryan, got the part. Crossfire proved to be his breakthrough, although soon enough, he'd regret the typecasting that resulted from his Oscar-nominated portrayal of an ignorant and hateful bigot. Nobody knows exactly, except me and you. What'd you have to go after the guy for? Crime any money, why'd you have to start in? I don't Joe is gonna tell me how to drink his stinking liquor. By 1947, RKO had developed in-house one of the top filmmaking teams in the business, with Adrian Scott producing, John Paxton writing tough, finely wrought screenplays, and Edward Dimitrick directing with forceful elegance. As collaborators, they reached their peak with Crossfire, which earned Oscar nominations for its script, direction, supporting actors Robert Ryan and Gloria Graham, as well as a nomination for Best Picture of the Year. Film noir or message movie? You decide. Because honestly, I don't care what it's labeled. All I know is that this is one tough, uncompromising film. From 1947, here is Crossfire. <laughs> 